doing it. Anyway, mo moving on. So, okay, so how should, um, no, okay, sorry, I'm jumping too far. Let's look at some of the whys quickly before we, we, we look on to the, some of the things that salespeople should start doing to develop their own, um, to start developing, them, developing themselves. So why should salespeople invest in their own development? Why is it so important? Let's end the current poll. All right, and I'll just share those results with everyone so they've got them to share. And I'll close that off. All right, so our next poll, we want to understand how much time you actually spend on sales development, whether you're a, a sales leader or whether you're a sales professional. We want to understand the amount of time that you do spend on those types of activities. Okay. And we're going to start that poll very shortly. Here we go. Three, two, one. And again, please, like any questions you've got on, on, on the poll, and if, if, if it's not the answer you want or you want to expand on it, jump onto the chat box, please. Let's, let's, let's hear your input. Um, so look, it, it, from what I've seen, John, just, I mean, we, I'm not going to use, I know we said we wouldn't use the C word throughout the session, but COVID has evolved the sales um, enablement profession, whether you're a BDR or a sales manager or a country manager, it's evolved, right? Things have, things, things have changed significantly. We don't have to go into those reasons now, but um, if you don't improve your um, knowledge and you don't learn and you don't self-develop your sales skills, whether, whether it's presenting or discovery, whatever it may be, you will become un unemployable, right? <clears throat> you look at all those people now fighting for, um, or you've got all the organizations fighting for the good people, but you've also got a lot of people that aren't passing those interviews. Um, it's a reality. If you lack the skills that sales professionals are searching for, uh, it's time for you to find a new profession, right? Or start learning. Um, and it's something me personally, I've, I've, I've personally gone on this journey, John, where I, um, I've had to realize that I've had to start spending at least an hour a day listening to a new book or or, or learning something new or, or trying to jump on a podcast right because if i don't do it um I, I i i'm i've got to show example to my clients right i've got to show that i'm just as capable uh, if, if i'm not doing it then my sales people aren't doing it then why use me as an agency right okay um moving forward and oh karen thanks for uh providing the link for uh john's book great to have you on the sessions today as well um yeah Good everyone you, karen <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks for joining. I didn't see you on the list there. Great, great stuff. Um, so yeah, so B2B sales has transformed significantly over the last two years. I've already mentioned the C word. It's, I'm not mentioning it again, but but that being a huge catalyst, um, the working from home, the minimal switchboards, being able to get tra calls transferred over switchboards, prospecting issues, that's really what we're looking at. Um, there are new ways that we need to be prospecting, qualifying, discovering, qualifying and closing. You have to learn these new skills, right? I'm sure there was plenty of salespeople when we went into lockdown um, that went, oh my God, you know, I I'm used to whining and dining people. Now I've got to do everything from the phone and from video. How do I do that? I'm, I'm getting depressed, you know, I've got to learn, I've got to adapt, right? Um, so, so John, I guess I'm keen to understand, can the old fashioned sales king still reign supreme on the land and keep selling ice to Eskimos without ever re reading a, a sales book? So just before you answer that, what I mean is there's, there's, there are these unique salespeople that I've come across that um, will never read a book, they, they will never put anything in the CRM, but they'll go out and have a, you know, a, a three or four hour session with a, a couple of prospects and come back with a signed contract, right? Are those, are those people still, are they, are they, do they just have to gift, gift of the gab? What, what are your thoughts on that? Now, most of them have developed their skills in one way or another. Uh, the, the companies okay. may have helped them develop. They develop it. We don't all learn the same way. Sure. Um, we don't all have to read a book. Uh, yep. Although I, I've got to say, if you really want to self-develop, you, you know, most people have to read a book. But of course, your books these days, you don't just have to read them. As you mentioned earlier, I think you're listening to the Wentworth Prospect. Is that right? Rather Absolutely, than, yeah. Yeah, so, so most books have got an audio version. Uh, and and we've, all, yeah, we've all got the capability of listening to something while we're driving or exercising or walking the dog or whatever it is we do. Yeah. Um, and um, so yeah, we can listen to that. We can listen to podcasts. There's all sorts of ways in which we can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, but back to your... Um, your top sales guy that's out there, they've learned somehow. They, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of people have got some innate skills that, that will help them sell more effectively, but everybody can sell if we develop. Uh, and so it's, it's for, the, for all the, the, the struggling salespeople out mm -hmm. there, if we work on developing our skills and practicing those skills, you can be successful. 
very good. I remember when I was when I was around, when I was, I'd say about ten years old, and uh, a friend of mine and we used to prank call people um, just for the fun of it. Like if anyone's ever seen The Simpsons, and they call up the person in the bar as a as a joke, and then and, and home, uh, was Bart Simpson would always do some funny joke. So that that was our thing when we were ten years old, and we'd call up people, and I always remember um, our neighbours gathering with my parents and saying, "You're." Yeah, your son's gonna God, he's gonna be some sort of telly prospect. He's gonna be some sort of, you know, sales genius. And I'm, uh, I'm not not quite a genius, but um, yeah. And then yeah, I've created a business and a and a career based on uh, let's not call it cold calling, let's call it demand gen, right? So, yeah. So I may, maybe there is some gift of the gab in some sense, but uh, and that's an interesting point. Hey, um, we've got a question from the audience, Ron Reed. So, do you find that companies set annual targets? Uh, other than measure performance weekly. Um, that's interesting. For, for, for me to answer that one, Ron, I, I go back to my career in sales um, prior to setting up this business and, and I guess how I do it. Um, no, I think that it depends on the organisation, right? It can be quarterly, it can be weekly, it can be, right? I, I think, uh, Ron, are you you're possibly getting to uh, how do we, do we measure help people measure their progress and in, in their own self-development uh, and I think that's really a really important question if it's focused around that um, we we need to look at how we develop personally set your own objectives to 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 how, where do I want to be in a quarter's time where do I want to be in a month's time where do I want to be in five years time in terms of my capability my ability to be successful uh, in the sales and sales leadership world. Mm. Um, and, and we need to then set objectives and and measure and then progress towards and measure our progress uh, towards those objectives. Self-development is so important. Mm. Uh, and, and it's very easy to get to sit back and say, well, I'm doing okay. Uh, and you stop stop developing and very, very quickly you'll find yourself out of out of a job or, or being unsuccessful. Hey, hey, so so I want to direct another question to you, John, and, and maybe it's going to be a talking subject for the audience as well, just before we jump onto our, our final point, which I think is going to be more important. And I want to keep keep most of the session's time available for that in terms of how, what do we do and how do we go about improving our sales skills? So th there is an interesting balance. And, and again, I know I mentioned the C word again, I should have someone here. I should have, a, I should have had someone harder moderated hit me in the head every time I mentioned it. Um, but I know that um, lately there's been a lot of change and a, and a lot of working from home and the whole COVID thing has essentially, in a lot of ways, it's got us thinking, right? You know, family, hobbies, self-development. A lot of uh, colleagues and friends of mine have jumped ship from different organisations that have said, hey, you know, we need you to come into the office. And I'm a big office advocate, but I'm kind of also a, hey, if you want to work from home, you can do that as well. Um, but that not being the issue we're talking about, but, but there's a lot of focus more on family, hobbies, friends, and maybe people are feeling, feeling burnt out and you've got the corporate America or corporate Australia, right? Um, but, but again, for me, it's hard to sort of uh, relate in a lot of ways because I, in some ways, I, I pray I can get a salary at the end of the month and not, not, not worry. But on the other side of the coin, I'm running a business that doesn't, that's not how it works. Um, so I guess my, the question I want to throw the audience and to, to you, John, is what is the right balance? You know, how do you, you know, you work 10 hours and you're like, wow, that was a really busy day. I've got a newborn baby at home. I want to go and spend time with them. Um, I'm puffed out at the end of the day. I don't want to be sitting there for an hour listening to a book. I'm going to jump on the train if you're in the office or I'm going to go open my door and go and see my newborn son uh, or go play with the kids. What, what's your, um, how do you get the right balance? How do you get that motivation of, oh, I, I've done enough and, you know, now I've got to do something for me to develop my skills, but I kind of feel like work switched off now. I mean, that's something I can personally relate to when you, you know, when you mind so much, you're like, well, I should probably just switch off anyway, right? But I, I will force myself to listen. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, there's two words. You use the word balance and you do yeah. need to achieve that. Yeah. So what, is, well, is, what does balance need, mean? It means something different to everybody. Yeah. Everybody needs to identify what level of balance they need, how many hours at work, how many hours at play, yeah. at home, and so on and so forth, how many hours in, in self-development. Uh, plan that and then manage it. Mm. <laughs> now, that's, that's easily said, isn't it? However, yeah. uh, if, if you uh, at the end of, have put a plan together and then of a month or two months or a quarter said, whoa, I really didn't get any time into self-development. Mm. 
then you're not managing your plan. How do I yeah. get back to managing that plan? It's, it's, it's as simple as that. We as salespeople, all of us as salespeople are managing our business. This is a concept I think we need to get into our minds. Mm. It's, it's not, you're not just a, an employee of a company. You're managing your own business. You've got your own territory. Uh, you, you, you need to put a plan together. And that plan should be a plan, not just for business, but for, for self-development and so on. Mm. And then work the plan. Simple, I mean, sounds simple, doesn't it? it? It's not easy, but we need to do that. Mm-hmm. So every single individual needs to be accountable for their own business, yep. managing their own territory, achieving their own objectives, mm-hmm. and they need to be accountable to themselves to develop themselves so that they are successful in their career and their life. That's really good insights, John. And I always remember an old um, an old manager of mine saying, "Treat your business like treat your sorry, treat your." Um, your job like it's your business. Um, like if you don't hit your number, you don't you don't eat. Um, and I guess that can be quite hard when you, you, you do eat anyway, right? Well, actually, I do eat anyway. <laughs> I, can, I can jump to another organisation, but I agree. Everyone needs a plan, right? And that's something that I, me personally, I've I failed on, and I've and then I do put a plan together and we execute it. We're not no one's perfect, right? We don't we 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 create ten goals. Most people out there won't go. I'm going to. I'm going to achieve all of these ten goals. We get sidetracked. We move around. We we might achieve three of those goals, right? But we've still got a plan and a goal that we need to be achieving, right? Um, but I was watching Arnie Arnold Schwarzenegger's motivational speech from, I think from a few years ago, and his even his big focus. You know, you've got to have a goal, otherwise your ship's you know sailing in the wrong direction. Uh, and some people do it from the wing of their seat, but they, everyone has a goal in some shape or form. It's either written down on paper or it's in their mind. They that they're, they're, there's an end goal and then there's individual goals to achieve, right? So it's important that we document that as well, so we understand how to, um, yeah, how we can how we can sort of develop those skills over a time frame okay. that meets us. We talk about sales and managing sales and now measuring yeah. activity because activity leads to. Uh, steps towards a goal uh, or, or achieving objectives. And that's what we need to do, managing our own affairs mm-hmm. and putting a plan in together and then uh, identify what activity. So mm-hmm. self-development, you know, yeah. we might decide we want to do three hours of self-development every week. Now, that's not a lot. I I'm, mm-hmm. sometimes think it should be a lot more than that. But three yeah. hours is probably doable for a lot of people. When and how are we going to do that? You need to think through carefully and then put a discipline in place. Hey, how many of us join gyms? And we, we go two or three times over the first uh, yeah. week or, or month. And then we dropped and suddenly we realized we've been paying membership for a gym for two months and we, we haven't been once. So it's setting up that discipline to make sure we have yeah. that activity we, that are going to progress us towards the goals that we, we've set. Uh, and, and then becoming disciplined. Now, mm-hmm. If you can't become disciplined in your own life, you're never going to become disciplined in your job and you're yeah. not going to be successful in your career. So the number one objective is not so much setting goals, it's Mm -hmm. identifying the activity you need to get those goals and then being disciplined and making sure every week, or in fact, every day, you do some work Mm -hmm. towards the activity that's necessary, whether it's to your own development or it's uh, growing a pipeline, prospecting or progressing uh, things, uh, deals through pipelines and so on. It's all about the discipline every day. What do I need to do today what activities do, do I need to do to, to achieve my weekly plan of activities that I know will ultimately achieve the outcomes I'm looking for? Very good. Um, if anyone has any other questions on this, uh, on the whys, please throw them into the chat box now. Um, but we're going to move on to, a, I would say, the most important point of this session. And we're going to start looking at, um, you know, what is it that salespeople need to start doing to improve their core skills and capability? Um, really, really super important. I'm going to end this poll and I'm going to share those results just for a few seconds while I talk about the next poll. So we want to, um, we need to look at the types of activities and resources that salespeople, myself, John's doing every day uh, in order to improve. We should always improve. The best pilot in the world, he, he doesn't stop learning how to fly a plane. A, a pilot has to do a simulator every, I think it's every six months. My dad was a pilot for British Airways. And um, they don't just, you know, you don't just say, hey, that's it, you're done. And now go fly a plane and we'll see you, you know, when you retire. Um, it's, they're constantly improving processes, procedures. Something falls off a plane. Why did that happen? Like two pilots argue with each other. Well, we need to bring in some sort of training to make sure pilots work well together, right? So it's a, it's a constant learning uh, it's, it's it's a constant learning exercise right so 
All right, so if everyone's got those results now, I'm going to bring us on to the next poll. Please be interactive on this. And again, chat box is open for you to uh, have any input uh, on this outside of <clears throat> what we already have in there or just your own opinion. Just please go ahead. So, so what sales development resources have you as sales? Have I made a mistake there? No, I've just put some gaps. Sales leaders, professionals invested in over the last 12, over the last, in over the last 12 months. You can tell I was rushing this through when I was writing this up last night. Anyway, um, yeah, so what sales development resources have you as sales leaders or professionals or country managers or um, whatever it may be, have you invested in over the last 12 months? So I can see the results coming in there. So we'll get that started, all right? Um, so this is really important. You need to actively start putting together resources and tools that are gonna help you succeed as a sales professional. I would personally recommend, and feel free to jump in, John, if you've got another uh, on your view on this. I really respect your um, your experience and skill set on this. But but start with a mentor, right? I, I personally have maybe 10 different people that I call up every now and then and ask them for help. Um, and I owe these people when I next fly into Australia amounts, amounts of dinners and wine. Um, but these people, guy, I don't. It, it's, it's like take everything like a pinch of salt. One mentor will tell you one thing. One mentor will tell you something else. They're not necessarily right. They're not necessarily wrong, right? But listen to them and, and, and talk to them. Help them as much as they help you in order to identify things that you should start be doing. I mean, if someone says, go and read a book, oh, I'll go and find the, the top 10 sales books that I should be reading. That's great. But what relevance is it to you? Do you need to improve your discovery skills? Do you need to improve your presentation skills? Do you need to improve um, you know, the, the, your listing skills, your your storytelling skills, right? Find stuff that's relevant to you, right? So, um, I, mean, I mean, John, what would you start? What would you recommend starting with? I mean, I, personally, for me, I'd go to a mentor and, I, and then I'd start looking for some sales books on things that I would uh, fill things that I feel that I would be interested in reading, but also need to, to be learning about to improve. Right. So or would you start with sales books, podcasts? I mean, what, what's your, what's your personal sort of recommendation on that to the audience? Well, let me go back to what you were talking about. And that's mentor. Sure. Um, first of all, I agree with you. Uh, we all need mentors. We all need coaches and it doesn't necessarily need to be your managers or, or, or necessarily need to be somebody in your own organization. Uh, in fact, I can see some names up here. Tom Langley. Tom Langley was a mentor of mine. There you go. Uh, good to see you here, Tom. Um, but we all need a mentor. And, and if you're out there struggling and you've got nobody to talk to and say, you know, share your experiences, etc., then you've got to go and find people. Uh, absolutely critical. We all need to work with others. Yeah. Now, the other thing I, uh, I do is, is uh, and recommend very strongly are peer groups. Mm -hmm. Now get a, get a group of people that are all in the same sort of role as you, but probably not competing because you don't want to be sharing competitive information and, and get together every, you know, in this day and age, maybe on Zoom or you know, if they're local and you can, you get out and you know, have a cup of coffee together you know, once, a, once a month or whatever and, and just, hey, how did you, you had this sort of problem? I have too. How would you go about handling it? Uh, and learning from each other. So you raise a really good point there. Uh, peer groups and mentoring, uh, mm -hmm. absolutely critical to our own, own self-development. Sorry, what was your question then? No, that, that's okay. No, you you, um, you answered it in a different way, but I'll... Um... So no, yeah, so, 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 so what would you recommend starting with? Yeah, a mentor, um, someone helps. So, so in terms of, I guess, if, if, if you were to say um to someone what 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 book should you should you start reading right or what podcast I and mean, what what would you get would get so would you would it depend on that individual's learning capabilities what they prefer uh what would you recommend to someone on the types of things that they should be doing to to, to activities to improve their sales development well i said earlier that we all learn differently there's, yeah there's multiple ways in which we learn uh so we all need to think about how we develop our, our how we learn and, and what, what learns best now you, yeah you mentioned books yeah what the reason i wrote a novel is a lot of us like to read novels but we can't read textbooks yeah uh, and a novel uh, written well uh, i've written i've read a few business novels in the past that are absolutely atrocious novels <laughs> uh, and the one thing that i really worked hard to do was get the i had two co-authors and one of them is a is, is has become a, a, a renowned novelist he's brilliant and so without him, we couldn't have got the message over. But, the, yeah. but you know, if, if you like a good novel, then there's, there's um, novels out there, business novels that you can learn from. Uh, and the Wentworth Prospects one. 
Um, I, I hate textbooks. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, get, I buy every new sales book that comes out, I tend to buy. You know, I mean, I just can't help myself. Uh, but I flip through them. I'll, I'll you know, I'm, I might only spend half an hour on a new book I've read. I get, get the gist of what's in it. I know yeah. where to go as a reference book, and then I'll move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the way I learn. I can't read a textbook. Well, I call it a textbook. A can't typical sales book. I can't pick up and read from cover to cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just find it uh, inappropriate for my learning. Whereas I can read a novel. Um, but there's not just that. I mean, listening. Yeah, all books these days, n- nearly all books have an audio mm-hmm. that goes with them. Uh, nearly all books um, have an a, a, a online version, yeah. a, a, an e-book, uh, and, and then you've got the printed version. Now, a lot of people love a printed book. Mm-hmm. But these day, this day and age, yeah, the, 65%, uh, I heard the other day, of sales books in the US mm-hmm. uh, are being sold as audio books. So that tells you something. If we get in the habit of listening whenever we're doing leisure work or driving or whatever, there's a great opportunity to learn. And, and a lot of us are very good audio learners. Not all, mm-hmm. not all. So if you're not a good audio learner, this is not a recommendation that you can make uh, take sense of. I see you put some recommended reads up there. Um, I thought it was about time we stuck that one up. Yeah, no, I thought that would be good um, <laughs> from a talking point. I mean, yeah. I, I could give you a list of 100 books, um, mm-hmm. but I like I like your list here. Um, seven stories, if, if anybody's... Uh, not read that seven stories that uh, every salesperson must tell by uh, Mike Adams. Um, really good book. And, and we as salespeople need to develop that skill to tell a story. And it's not just simply telling a story. We have to know how to tell a story and know when to use the right sort of stories during our sales process. And that's what that book's all about. So, um, and, and there's an audio version of that book as, as well. I've never, I don't know, never splits. Spin selling. Yeah. If you haven't read Spin Selling, uh, it's a, what is it, 1980 book or thereabouts. So, yeah. um, and, and you've written there the Bible of selling. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It's the, if you want to learn how to properly sell, properly ask questions, the right framework for questions and so on, Spin Selling is brilliant. Wayne Maloney, Your Roadmap to Achieving Sales Success, a great handbook for salespeople. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly new sales people, yeah, pick that up, read it, refer to it, be, make it become your support book. Um, would recommend it very strongly. Um, the Perfect Close by James Muir. I'm jumping over the ones I don't know, by the way. Um, oh, sorry, Succeed Without Selling. That's what won mm. the, the gold award recently. It, it, there's, there's another th- recommendation, Top Sales World, which is a magazine based out of the UK, is the, uh, the the biggest and most wide, widespread uh, read magazine in the world, in the world of B2B sales. So you should be um, regis- uh, registering to get, to get that every month uh, and read that. And of course, out of that, they publish lots and lots of articles and so on, written by some, some great thinkers in the, in the sales world. Now, they recently, and they every year they run an awards, set of awards, one of which is the best sales and marketing book. So Diane Helberg, Helbing won that with Succeed Without Selling. You've got to go and read that one. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the best book of the year in sales. And, of course, the silver medal went to the Wentworth Prospect, our book. So um, uh, we're very proud of that. And that's a very good read, John. I uh, read or or audio. Like I said, I couldn't put it down or I couldn't stop listening. I'm I'm seventy percent of the way through, um, but it's just a great story. It's got um, some nice twists in it, and you can relate to it as well, right? You can relate to it from a corporate perspective and and also to a personal things that happen in our own lives. So it's it's been and it is, it very is well. a model. It is a it novel. Is, it's, yeah. it's people getting killed. There's all sorts yeah. of things happening. So yeah, a lot of fun. Very good. And there's some others worth mentioning. I mean, there's, there's my uh, my own uh, book. So feel free if, if you're uh, looking for how to find the perfect fit client, maybe you're new to sales, you're not as experienced and, you, you know, you, you're not sure you start working with a prospect client and you've got to, you're thinking, are they going to be a tire kicker? Are they are they, are they going to be wasting my time? And um, look, take a look at mine, um, 99 cents on Amazon, or you can buy the book if you like. And it'll just give you a bit of a guide to run through to see if they're a perfect match client. You know, ask yourself questions. So 
you spend only maybe a few hours with them as opposed to a few weeks and months and then only find out that they're even if you sign them up they're like the worst clients you've brought in on, on ever and you know they actually won't make your business any money um a couple of others yeah. worth mentioning um if that's okay john tony hughes yeah. books um i yeah. the first book i read um actually what got me back into it was combo prospecting by tony hughes now i kind of agree and disagree with with a lot of the things in here but one thing it taught me was a multiple communication method so i never i never really sms'd anyone cold um or it would only be smsing a client if i was trying to reach them right and i'm here based in the philippines um and i've got a couple of sim cards in my phone and a uk one an australian one and a local one um and i didn't i just didn't realize the approach of the fact that if you really need to reach someone and you've got a compelling message and you need to pull them out of that world um this book will teach you how to do that um you know messaging on linkedin and you're an smsing and um calling leaving voice messages and it pulls someone out the world but of their busy world but make sure you use the right compelling message otherwise you just annoy people um, and tech powered sales um like if i was to compare tech powered sales and wentworth prospect wentworth prospect is a great like it's it's a great listening a, a great novel right you listen to it you hear a story with tech powered sales if you want to learn and pick and pin out all the best technologies out there for automation and sales. Um, that's what I used it for. Other people use it for different things. But for me, I jumped on that book and I went, you know what? I need to learn of all the, all the different AI techs out there for sending emails, for finding phone numbers, and I'm going to do a demo with every single one, right? So that, 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 that was more the, the benefit I received from that. Um, I'm jumping ahead now, but but I would start with the Wentworth Prospect, uh, even above my own book. I just think that's a that it's one of those ones that you can listen when you're half tired and half asleep from doing a 12 hour day. It's, it's a really great, uh, really great listen. That one, a really great read, definitely. So so uh, we've talked a lot there about books, but there's lots of other channels for learning. Um, one that I find very valuable are podcasts, uh, and there's some really good podcasts out there. Just to mention mm. a few, Andy Paul, I forget what he calls it. Uh, mm -hmm. In the US, he, he does a great podcast. I've just got, got to listen to his bloody advertisements. That's anything. <laughs> but you know, once you're through that, uh, the content is brilliant. He's always interviewing people that are outstanding. Um, Paul Watts, um, uh, again, I can't remember the name of uh, what is it? It doesn't matter, but the, he runs a podcast uh, with some brilliant um, people that he interviews and he does it very well. Mm -hmm. He's a Canadian based guy. Um, here in Australia, um, Steve, Stephen Norman runs a great podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, all of these look up on LinkedIn, find the podcast and, and uh, listen to one or two. And if you like one or two podcasts, they, these guys typically put out at least one a week uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they're really good listening. Um, and, and there again, it's, you know, if you're driving to and from work or wherever you're going uh, every, every week, listen to a podcast mm -hmm. at least once a week uh, and, and it's good learning. Uh, a lot of online training available too, so go mm -hmm. out there. I, you know, the, the, the straight online training, I'm, I've had a lot of feedback that people don't find them high value and they never complete mm -hmm. it. But, yeah, there's a lot that's good out there. Uh, Sales IQ is one here in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they have some really good uh, online training. Um, and Tony Hughes is part of that organisation, along with uh, Luigi Prestonenzi. Um so there's just to name a few, um, if, if, and it's it's really community based learning. I put together the sales the sales masterminds, uh, which for me is a peer group. So it's a whole lot of guys uh, like me that are making a big difference in the world of sales, and we get together and talk, you know, uh, once a month or thereabouts, and share uh, what's working, what's not working in the sales world, and in our own businesses, and so on. That's the sort of stuff. And I, and I couldn't, I, you know, sales leader forums, by the way, we run peer groups for sales leaders. Um, but, you know, if you want a peer group for a salesperson, you know, just go reach out, find out who you can get together with and formally get together once a month and, and compare notes and learn from each other. Great ways to learn. Thanks, John. Um Another one that I just thought of, actually, I had to quickly stick it in Google to, to remind myself, and it was written in the 50s, which very much, uh, honestly, when I read this and, and I looked at how it was written so many years ago and in, re and in relation to um, today's methodologies and how things have changed, it, it just completely resonated. Um, the Magic of Thinking Big, John, I don't know if you've come across that one by David Swartz. Yep. 
absolutely brilliant book. A friend of mine gave me an old tattered book. It must have gone on to six or seven other people now. That that is one of the and I only and I only read seventy percent of it. But again, it was one of those books that just changes the way that you think. The glass half full, glass half empty, right? Um, but it just helps you to really understand. Um, the dynamics of and and and, and it's, it's funny like well, what I, what we generally find is if your home life is a mess you know you're going for a, a, a relationship issues um generally your business or your work's going to get affected right there's there's this balance right that you've got to try and equate but if you can if you can change the way your mind works you can kind of have both working correct right but if if one or two aren't, aren't correct or if all of them are falling apart then you've got to you've got to start fixing things right hey we, we got some recommendations from the audience john uh for some books so i'll just read them out um i'm not sure if this is a book or a um a podcast uh, negotiation ninja that sounds does sound familiar in some ways from chris chilton um, and the brutal truth about sales and selling podcasts. I've heard of this. I've, I, I, I've, I've had some positive uh, insights about this. I haven't personally uh, listened to this, um, but it's going on my list now. Um, Deep Listening by Oscar Trimble. Have you heard of that one, John? Does that come a... Sorry, what was it? Uh, Deep Listening by Oscar Trimboli. Oh, no, yes, I have. I have I've okay. actually got a copy of that here, yes. Very good. Um, so there's a couple. Uh, I mean, of, there, there, there's some really good books there on uh, yeah. on mindset, getting the mindset right, and how mm -hmm. to do that. Um, you know, one of the one of the blights that a lot of companies uh, do to our industry is they teach people to sell their product. And it's all about feature, function, benefit of products, not about the customer. And and uh, anything that help us get our mindset back on the customer and and be there to help the customer through a buying journey to achieve an yep. outcome rather than here's our product feature function benefit you should buy it Mr Customer yep. uh, will change the prof your professionalism so mindset mm -hmm. and getting the right mindset around yep. sales is absolutely critical some really good books around that that was Sean Walsh yeah th thanks for that that's the um, the brutal truth about sales and selling podcast and um, so this is the uh the book that you, that you give to your new sales people um oh so no sorry that wasn't that one it's how i raised myself from failure to success and selling be uh, better um oh sorry been selling by frank Bed betger brilliant no no let's let's take a note of that one as well i, I have heard, i have heard of that book and i haven't read it so it's going on my book list my book list is getting bigger and bigger john <laughs> i've got to start reading faster or listening faster that's good well, how I'm many reading. books a year how many books a year do you read matt I, I only go through one. Uh, last year it was one a month uh, or one a month and a half. And then um, my wife became pregnant and things got busy and life got in the way. And then it was one every two months. And, and then over Christmas, none. Um, and I've just started again. I've, I'm, well, I'm nearly through yours. So that would be the first one for January. Uh, although, although I did technically start that at Christmas. So yeah, one, one a month. Um, I don't know if that's enough. No, that's or fine. Have you ever, yeah. I mean, if, 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 any, if uh, people set their objectives on getting one book a month, and it doesn't have to be a sales book, by the way, but you know, yep. one, one self-development book a month, uh, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, and if, if, if you don't like reading, then listen to the audio of those books. And I find mixing them up as well. You don't have to just read or listen to one book. You can switch between different ones. I find that helps me depending on my mood. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to, you know, I don't feel like a novel today. I'm going to leave the Wentworth and I'm going to read, I'm going to read an article or I'm going to listen to an actual, a novel, but a, a non-sales related novel. I want to read some fiction, right? You can mi mi like mix them up as well, right? So, you know, you're not, um, you don't want to overdo it, but okay, if what, what once a month seems to be okay. So um, that's what, well, that's the general feedback that I get from people, um, but it's just sticking to it. That's the hard part. So look, we're going to cover some of the polls results for the last five minutes. And if anyone's got any questions, please, um, we're in our final five minutes of the session. So this is a time to pick um, not necessarily my brain, but John's brain as well on any questions on the subject. Um, but, but if we look at the third poll, it seems that um, I would say most people are watching webinars. So that's great. We've got a few people on this webinar today. Um, so that's, that seems to be the most popular method of, of learning, followed by books, um, then podcasts, videos, online training. Um, but funny, John, remember we were chatting a few days ago around customer domain knowledge. That, that seems to be on the lowest at 35%, right? And I'm, it's interesting how that, uh, if, 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 if may, maybe it was misread, but maybe not customer domain knowledge being the knowledge um your understanding your customers right their industry their dynamics yeah, we, right we, we we need to we need 
as salespeople, the number one thing we need to be able to do is have a conversation with the client about their business. Yeah, absolutely. And if we don't have domain knowledge about you know, some aspects of their business, we can't have those conversations. Uh, we'll have them and create any value through that conversation for the client. To me, domain knowledge is much, much more important than product mm -hmm. knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, it's it's something we need to learn. Um, it, it's funny, Sue, the, the, the Wentworth prospect, the, the heroine name is Sue. Mm. Sue um, is based on a, a true character that I was coaching going back a few years ago now. Wow. Uh, okay. and, and I uh, helped to, you know, I said, you know, you've got to build your personal brand. You've got to build yeah. your main knowledge out there. You've got to be have. and she was selling to the banking industry. Mm. Uh, and she went out of her way to attend conference, banking conferences and, and listen to all the conversations that are happening in the banking world, uh, read uh, banking magazines and a whole host of things. She became, she was able to go in and hold a conversation with any senior banker and, and hold it, hold her stead peer to peer conversation. To me, that's what a salesperson needs to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, building your, your knowledge and capability around uh, some aspect of the customer's domain, domain is critical. Very good. And I 100% agree. And it's something that I personally try to do. Like you find a specialist in, you know, what are you selling? Who are you selling to? Pick. Uh, an industry okay it's technology right which part of technology are you send into you send into cyber security erp um you know, whatever it may be right and then, and then find companies that match that and then from there um, understand how those organizations work what's happening in the industry well, how is cyber security developing what's going on with hackers all that sort of stuff just understand that and also find out what events are going on see what the c-level executives are up to on linkedin and what they're attending as well and it's pretty soon when you jump on the phone with these people um, you'll actually be able to have really intelligent conversations and they won't be saying why are you calling me oh my god is this a cold call this is still, oh no this is the bad worst time because you're talking their language right so absolutely i 100 percent and agree with that statement great now given that we have uh three minutes left so we've done well we've, we've covered most things uh for this entire session which we normally run out of time so i'm very happy that we're uh, at this point uh any last questions throw them in um if not we'll start wrapping up Okay, um, thank you everyone for joining today's session. I hope it was useful. I will be sending everyone that attended the list of books and other stuff that you can, you know, you can take a look at, uh, including my own and definitely John's book. But I'd highly recommend get you know start listening, listening or, or reading John's uh, The Wentworth Prospect, but also look at some of those other books as well and, and find a mentor that's going to help you. Um, and just just get you know stick it in the calendar every day at a certain time and stick to it, right? It's like a date night. Well, that's something I need to work on more. You know, you have a date night, it's, it's locked in, nothing gets in the way and and and, and, and that's that, that's it, right? It's, it, it's in the uh, it's in the calendar. So um, yeah, the, 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 I did have a bit of a, I'll send the first five attendees, I can't name them now, but I'll bring up the list. I'll send you a, a physical copy of my book. I'll reach out to you later. That's, that's just from my end. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add, John, before we sort of sum up? For, uh, uh, take... I'm just looking at some of the names out there attending this thing. And I've, I've Go got to say, it. there's people I know well, uh, and they will know some of the people we've worked with in the past. Uh, if you get the Wentworth Prospect, ha, um, just see if you recognize any characters in the book. You'll find it quite interesting. Well, and Karen, it's great to have you on this session. Um, you know, we haven't, well, the last time we met was probably down the uh, CBIT, which uh, I believe we're going to have again, which is called SMB Digital in Sydney. And um, and I've got some great news. Um, they've taken quarantine and stuff away. So I'm looking forward to flying into Sydney and, and, and hopefully doing some face-to-face -face stuff. So uh, that's really, really exciting. So um, yeah, and no, I look forward to, if I meet, meeting any anyone on the, uh, on our attendee list and uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's been a great session today. And um, yeah, you'll receive stuff via email. John, thank you, most importantly. Really appreciate you attending today. And uh, yeah, have a great My pleasure, afternoon. Mate. My pleasure.